And that leads us on to the requirements for a business modelling notation which we can use to create a conceptual model for communication purposes. Um, now, there are really three requirements for a modelling technique and uh, a notation and the tools that support that notation. Uh, they are, they should be focused on communication, they should be simple and uncluttered, and they should be definitive and unambiguous. Um, most of the tools and techniques that I know uh, fall short on one or more of these um, criteria. Um, and so what I've done is to create a hybrid between the Kaleido notation, which is um, heavily focused towards communication and is very simple and uncluttered, um, it does provide an, uh, a definitive and un unambiguous way of uh, presenting a, a, a conceptual model. Um, but I think the Barker definitions for reading a model and, and checking a model are extremely strong, and so I've wound those in alongside the Collider notation um, in, in the examples that I use in the rest of this video. So um, that, that doesn't mean to say that the, um, the techniques you already use um, cannot be used. They can. Um, so if you already have data models, um, I'm going to make some suggestions for how you can help declutter them and how you can present using those existing modelling techniques um, if you want to. Uh, so there's no reason you have to throw out all of your existing um, um, notation and techniques. You can reuse those. Um, equally well, if you want to use the Kaleido notation, Kaleido allows you to download a free tool to su support that. Um, and the Barker notation for reading uh, models is available in, in the Barker and Case Modelling books from Oracle. Um, or alternatively, a little bit later on in one of the videos, I shall show you how to do that from scratch. So let's take a look at um, the Kaleido modelling notation and uh, introduce how that works in practice. Um, I've produced a, an example here with classes of entity classes of attribute and classes of relationship at the top of this slide um, with some example entities, attributes and relationships at the bottom. Uh, you can see that the entities are in boxes and the relationships are uh, arrows between the boxes. Uh, the attributes are listed in the, uh, in the entities in similar, in, uh, very similar to, to many other notations like this. Um, the subtypes are supported with boxes in boxes so you can see from this example I've got four uh, entities and the class of entity at the top here. Uh, we've got flight um, and we've got two subtypes of flight. We've got chartered flights and scheduled flights. Um, both chartered flights and scheduled flights inherit the attributes of flight. So there'll be a scheduled departure time and an actual departure time for both chartered flights and scheduled flights. Uh, scheduled flights in addition have a, a flight number and scheduled flights have a relationship with the airline that is operating those flights. Uh, so uh, as you can see from the example uh, at the bottom there, I've got uh, on the right hand side of this diagram two, uh, two airlines, British Airways and American Airways, and on the left hand side I've got three flights, uh, one of which is chartered and two of which are scheduled flights. The scheduled flights have the attribute of the flight number and the relationship to the airline that operates them. So in this particular example, uh, the scheduled flight uh, 320AA3156 is operated by American Airlines, as indeed is the scheduled flight 455 uh, American Airlines 2150. Okay, so that's an example of the, uh, of the notation. Um, it has to be said that you can use pretty well any notation uh, to create a conceptual model, and I would encourage you to, um, to use the notation that you're familiar with, but try and declutter it as much as possible. The reason I've chosen the modeling notation that I have is it's particularly well suited to conceptual modeling because of the lack of clutter. You'll see that, for example, the attributes don't have data types with them. The relationships are very simple as, as arrows and don't have lots of nomenclature um, surrounding their optionality and their cardinality and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit more of this um, in, in a future module, but as an example, 
this gives you uh, a feeling for the Collado modelling notation, which I'm going to combine with the Barker reading notation um, as a way of defining conceptual models for the rest of this video series. Now for some of you that will probably have raised more questions than it answered, but um, that's good. And I'm going to start by dealing with probably the most um, important question of how in a conceptual modelling technique like this we deal with the notion of time. That comes in Module 6.